Hello biology students! Today we're going to be talking about two different major types of cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This is our second page of notes for cells when we're in theme two. Make sure you're labeling and dating your notes. Alright, let's get started. Alright, let's first talk about the type of cell called a prokaryotic cell. We're going to talk about some examples of cells that fit into this category. The first type is called an archaebacteria. Very weird word. Say it again. Archaebacteria. Good. And then, this is so weird, we're going to really refer to this as our ancient bacteria. They love extreme environments, so sometimes we call them extremophiles. They like things that are super hot, like in Yellowstone, the geysers, or maybe even places where there's no oxygen available. Most creatures can't live in these environments. The name for being able to live without oxygen, we learned that. It's called anaerobic okay so this is why not all living things require oxygen especially because of these guys then we have another type of bacteria called eubacterium these are our normal true bacteria most of the things that you would think about maybe getting you sick or getting an infection okay strep or maybe some of these things like photosynthetic bacteria we have some bacteria oops down below that are different shapes Okay, we notice that this one says it's actually the anthrax bacteria, which is weird to think about. So lots of different types of things are bacteria. We usually think about bacteria being bad. We'll learn about ways bacteria are good throughout the year, but bacteria are a major example of prokaryotes. Just know that there's two major categories of bacteria now. All right, pause if you need to keep writing down stuff, but we're gonna keep going. So what are the major structures in this type of cell, prokaryotes, but there may be in both that and the other structure, a eukaryote. So here's a picture, prokaryotes, these guys, which we just learned are bacteria, and this is a eukaryote. Just initially, which one looks more complicated? I hope you said the eukaryotic cell, right? So many weirdo things in there. Versus our prokaryotic cell looks pretty simple, okay? We can see that there's this scale bar here. This says it is 0.1 to 10 micrometers. This one says 10 to 100 micrometers. Wow, so which one's bigger? This guy, right? So this looks like it's the same size, but really this is way smaller. Just take note of that. Let's talk about the structures now. So they both seem to have DNA on the inside. We can see DNA here is purple. It's inside the nucleus for this guy, the purple stuff. Then cytoplasm, that's our jelly-like substance that's kind of in the cell. This one, all the yellow stuff on the inside is the cytoplasm. Both types of cells have an outer surrounding thing called a cell membrane here. It's kind of this small layer here before we get to the yellow stuff. The yellow stuff's different. And here it's the purple, the cell membrane. And lastly, we have this weird thing. There are these little dots that you can barely see looking at this picture, ribosomes. They, I call them the freckles of the cell. We'll learn what they do in a little bit, but they are so small, you can barely see them in here. All right, so here are our four major common things that are in both types. Now we're going to learn about the differences, and we're going to learn more about what a eukaryotic cell is. Okay, prokaryotic cells, we learned, have those things, but we also might have noticed they had no nucleus. This DNA is just floating around, but nothing's holding it. Pretty wild. But not only that, they have no membrane-bound organelles. Organelles are actually our cell parts. Okay, so there's no tons of cell parts that we would see in the other type of cell called the eukaryotic cell. So we call that no membrane-bound organelles. What else? Actually, prokaryotes or bacteria, they arrived earlier in evolution. This makes sense because they are smaller and simpler. They're also, for the most part, just one cell. Sometimes they come in long chains, but each individual organism is just one of the cells. So we look here, doesn't this guy, remember it's smaller, and it's also a lot simpler. Look at all these organelles that have membranes around them, like a mitochondria and stuff. Okay, so earlier in evolution, Okay, and this one is more complex and larger. So, let's keep going. Let's learn about eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells, on the other hand, do have a nucleus. 
surrounding their DNA. They do have membrane-bound organelles. It's actually theorized right now. There's some uh, good bit of evidence that maybe a prokaryote was the origination of these membrane-bound organelles because these this mitochondria thing looks kind of like this prokaryotic cell. Wouldn't that be wild? Right? They are more recent in time, or more recent in time for evolution. They are larger and more complex. So just pretty much the opposites of what we said last time. Lastly, some of the eukaryotic cells are unicellular, but most things are multicellular. So which are we as humans? Prokaryote or eukaryote? You are a eukaryotic cell. You are a eukaryote. Okay, so here are the examples. Write them down. Amoeba is actually called a protist. P-R-O-T-I-S-T. Protist. Protists are all eukaryotes. They all have a nucleus. Plants are eukaryotes. They all have a nucleus as well. They're multicellular compared to this guy, a protist, which is unicellular. Fungi, also eukaryotes. Don't forget fungi and plant are different. We'll learn lots of ways they're different later. And then animals, you and I, like the llama, making a funny face. Well, we are eukaryotes as well. All right, so there's major categories. Which out of these is our one that's more likely to be one-celled? The protist. These all usually are multicellular. Good job. You guys made it.